Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to this week's edition of Setaru Webinar Live. Today we'll be uh, talking a little bit about streamlining your dig ticket processing with Setaru's 811 positive response solution. My name is Dylan McFetris, I'm the product market manager here at Setaru. And today I have with me Kevin Koshko, our chief product officer. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Yeah. Hey, Kevin, how are you doing today? I'm great, man. How are you? Good. Are you excited to talk a little bit about uh, dig tickets, 811, locates, and little flags on the grass? I am, you know, and timing is of the essence. So, you know, a lot of, uh, especially uh, SoCal uh, utilities are required to do positive response by the end of the year. So I know that's kind of a hot topic. Um, and yeah, we, we had recently done a webinar, what, in August uh, for the same topic. Yeah. Um, but, right. you know, kind of the, uh, that encore presentation, make sure everyone's in the know about what <laughs> we're doing. So. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good time for sure. And uh, a good topic because it's really a nice point solution, but it meshes really well with a lot of other things on our platform. So. Cool. Well, as usual, guys, uh, you know, want to kind of start out a little bit here talking about the, uh, the path to utility automation, et cetera. We talk about drops as a way to uh, help identify where people are in the path. We also use this for our webinars as a way to talk about what we're, what sort of aspects of this spectrum we're talking about today. So with 811, um, we're really talking about sort of digital, real time, and optimized. It's a really, really nice flow of electronic work orders and the, the management of those. There's also some small aspects of this that are really the, the start of self driving at the utility level. Um, we consider 811 a really kind of holistic solution. And um, we're going to be looking specifically today at Ceteru Omni and Ceteru Field Force. Um, but as usual, this is really held together by the Ceteru Connect application set, which is where all our integrations work. So all the integrations to those one call centers is done through Ceteru Connect. And today, I think we'll show you a really good sort of vision of how this uh, will help your utility process where you get tickets. A uh, quick overview of the agenda today. Uh, we had our little introduction already. Um, we're going to kind of go into our poll questions here in just a minute or two. Um, really trying to get some information from you guys about how you're interacting with 811, what your utility sort of places and its path towards uh, easing the, the burden that these can have on your organization. Uh, we'll do a brief overview of just 811 in general so you guys can kind of hear a little bit about the experience and uh, track record Sedru has with this. Um, and then we'll get right into a product demonstration. Today's session is definitely demonstration heavy. Um, after we roll out of that, we'll do a quick review of the 811 solution at Ceteru. And then we'll take a look at your poll questions and use those as a, as a chance to do some question and answer with you guys. So looking forward to uh, having a good call today. Indeed. Awesome. All right. With that, let's go ahead and uh, enter the poll questions. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar, uh, I'm about to launch the poll right now. We have three questions, um, and you should see those pop up in a separate window on your screen. You can move that around, get out of the way of the, uh, of the webinar content itself. What we'd like to do is have you guys um, just you know, answer these if you can over the course of the session today. Uh, we'll review those information with you guys at the end and use that as a way to talk about some of the things uh, that we covered today on our session. So. Um, I'm going to just read these out to you real quick so you can get a, a look at them in a nicer format on screen, and then we'll go ahead and get into the content. So with poll question number one, we're asking you how your utility currently handles 811 tickets. Now, we are aware that some of you are probably not dealing with 811 tickets at all, so those are definitely options. We're just trying to understand if this is something that you have a solution for, if you're using like the emails out of the one call center, using paper, electronic work orders, that sort of thing. Um, the second poll question is um, how is, you know, what sort of issues has your utility experienced in this work? You know, we've heard a lot from our clients. We have our own thoughts on what, what's out there, but we just want to sort of have you guys pick as many of these as you run into in the past. It helps us understand sort of what pain points and uh, issues people are dealing with in this process. And then finally, um, we want to ask a little bit about positive response because, as Kevin mentioned, Southern California has just uh, required this recently. Some other jurisdictions have it as an option. Some are requiring it in the future. Want to kind of understand um, what you're dealing with in your part of the country. So those are the poll questions that I said. 
Um, please go ahead and answer those at your leisure during the session. I will remind you a couple minutes before we wrap up um, that we're about to close those. And then as usual, please enter any questions you may have in the Q&A in the Zoom uh, channel down below, and we'll address those at the end. I uh, we'll look forward to covering the rest of the webinar with you guys. All right, Kevin, I'm going to hand it over to you. It's time to talk a little bit about 811 in general, and then we'll talk about some of those common issues that we've experienced and how we're going to solve it for everybody. Yeah, sounds good. So, you know, as, as most of you who are dealing with tickets know, um, kind of the core of everything is your, is your one call center. So for California, you have like USA North or you have Dig Alert. Um, for Louisiana, you have Louisiana One Call. For New England, you have Dig Safe. So regardless of the region, you're going to have a one call center that basically is that one place where an excavator or someone can call in to say, hey, we're going to dig here and we need all utilities and member agencies to come out, mark up the utilities so we don't hit anything, right? Um, so the, the process is typically where you would have a, an email sent to your organization with a, uh, an excavation or, or a locate request. It says, hey, you know, go ahead and check out this area from this uh, address, uh, you know, this location to this location. And that might be uh, in the old days, it was a fax that came in. Um, you would have uh, an email um, or, uh, or a phone call. Um, but, you know, most folks today are, are getting those emails coming in from <clears throat> the 811 center. So really the, um, you know, so, so that's kind of what they're trying to deal with, you know, with. Uh, any number of incoming tickets related to, um, you know, those uh, those locates. Um, we're seeing with the increase in building and construction um, that uh, some of those tickets are much much more than a utility is used to uh, used to seeing. So we had a, a couple of utilities that we worked with, and they were maybe having maybe 10 uh, locates a day. Um, then there was a, a huge fiber optic project that came into town and that had uh, basically multiplied, you know, three, fourfold. Um, so they were, you know, managing way more uh, than they were used to. So, you know, those are kind of things that just take place when it's a, it's a little bit out of the utility's control of, you know, how many tickets they're going to have to deal with. So, um, you know, for Cedaru, we, we saw these challenges and, you know, looking at, you know, some of the common issues, you know, a lot of times, you may be getting tickets that are outside of, you know, your service area. So you're still having to kind of deal with those and, and you know, sort those out. Um, and as I mentioned, like that volume of tickets, depending on what's going on within your service area, you may have, you know, way more tickets than you're used to dealing with. Um, so trying to manage and track all of those. Um, if there's uh, deadlines for emergency tickets or rush tickets, you know, how to get to those as quick as you can. Um, you know, and then of course with like the paperwork may, may be getting lost, uh, if you're taking photos or not taking photos, um, you know, with a camera and printing those out or whatever you're trying to do to document those, uh, makes it really tricky. Um, and then, you know, a very common one is just, you know, not having those GIS layers, uh, to, uh, you know, at your fingertips when you're trying to do your locate. Um, so, you know, that affects, you know, um, our ability to, to easily see, you know, if there's a, uh, if there's even a, you know, our, our uh, utilities in that locate area or not at a glance. Um, and then, of course, including photos from a device, whether that's your phone or tablet. Um, and then record keeping. So, you know, storing all of those locates, printing them out um, and archiving them somewhere. Um, and then, you know, the latest kind of uh, mandate for SoCal, um, but also, you know, pretty, uh, pretty prevalent across the U.S. is that those positive response requirements and, and trying to manage that. Yeah. So Kevin, you're painting quite a picture for me of someone out in the field with a fax machine and a piece of metal they're sticking <laughs> in the ground trying to locate their utilities. Uh, it sounds like a pretty bad uh, back in the day scenario. Yeah, I, you know, it's, it, it's interesting, right? Like it's, I think it's come a long way. Um, and, uh, but you know, I, I, I don't know if there was as much, you know, locates that were, that were happening back then in the earlier days, but, it's certainly, you know, they, I think they've learned their lesson, right? It's been, there's a lot of, you know, that damage prevention uh, groups yeah. that, uh, you know, kind of put this together and it's, it's so robust uh, and really come a long way, which is great to see. Yeah, I mean, I think it's easy to just to sum it up to say that this can be very disruptive, right, to a mm -hmm. utility and that 
um, especially for planned work and things that you're already doing. I mean, these these things can come in as a rush, as you mentioned. And yeah. um, you know, the goal here really with with a you know an eight one one ticket management system like Setters is to to streamline the process to incorporate it in the rest of your workflows and make it sort of something you can either do, you know, as part of your other work because you're in the neighborhood. Or, you know, if you have dedicated locators, they can have their day uh, be a lot better when things are automatically assigned to them. So. You bet. Great. Well, let's go ahead and uh, hop into the demo, Kevin, if we're ready. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And so, guys, we're going to start off in, uh, in Omni, our operations management network intelligence platform. And then uh, Kevin will show us some of the management here. And then we'll, we'll hop in a little later to the, uh, the field data collection platform. And we'll... Uh, out in the field and do some tickets. Sounds like a plan. Can you see me on the screen okay? That looks great. Thanks. Excellent. All right. So yeah, as Dylan shared, we're looking at Setaru Omni. This is our office-based uh, platform here. So within the big ticket functionality, uh, basically you can set up a tile within your Omni view. And for those of you who are familiar with Setaru, uh, these tiles up top are really representing different assets within your utility. So I may have big tickets that I'm keeping track of. I may be keeping track of main breaks or outages, maybe uh, repairs that are going on, hydrant and valve work orders, customer service requests. So really the list goes on of what you can use this platform uh, for. Uh, and obviously bringing in big tickets as one of these elements, you're able to put it into kind of a tile, uh, a very specific placeholder for all things related to uh, 811 and locate. So each of these tiles is pretty dynamic. You're able to have different reports tied to each one. Uh, so if I'm looking at like assigned emergency 811 tickets, uh, assigned non-emergency tickets, uh, and then you know closed tickets over the last day. So this is where I can keep track of all the, the work that's being done and, uh, and outstanding. So as far as how it works, right? So we would be able to um, take the emails that come in uh, to your utility, you'd be able to forward those to Setaru, uh, and then we would process that ticket and then create an actual work order for it. Um, so then once that ticket gets processed, you're going to see that in your Omni dashboard here um, with a location, with a dot on the map, uh, and then all of the uh, locate information available as well. So if I'm looking at this specific location here, so that's going to show me all the details related to it, when it was created, uh, when the work's going to start, all of the uh, the ticket information, and then also who I can dispatch this to. Now, the very nice thing is we just came out with a auto assign technology where you can actually, as soon as the ticket comes in, it will look at different geographic boundaries and will automatically assign it to certain folks within the utility. So, for example, if I have someone who's always handling kind of west of the freeway here, I can create a, a dig ticket area for that. And then anytime a ticket comes in, it'll automatically assign to that person, uh, especially for the larger utilities. You know, if you have the, uh, uh, you know, covering a large service area, many miles, um, this is super helpful because then you have your team that's just ready to uh, take those new tickets. And then using Setaru Omni, you can keep track of the tickets that are assigned and where they're at, but you don't necessarily have to do the dispatching anymore. So in early days, you know, you would uh, see the ticket come in, you'd have to assign it to each person, uh, and then, you know, that would show up on their field devices uh, with our latest updates. Uh, the moment the ticket comes in, it's going to do that check geography uh, and then assign it to that group based on where they're located, which is really nice. That's great. Thanks. Yeah. So, and then if we're looking at just the, the different ticket details, so as shared, you know, we kind of looked at that one example. I can, again, pull into the attributes here um, and then see all of the uh, uh, the different details here. So, you know, depending on, you know, what work was done, work, work, what work wasn't done. Um, so easily able to look at that. Here's our uh, non-emergency ticket. So, and then just being able to access more ticket details here. Um, so in this case, even getting into uh, all of the tickets that came in um, through the email, now I can put it into like nice fields. I can parse it out in a way that's easy to read. Uh, but then at any point in time, I can always get into that original ticket and see what was actually sent. But having it all not only able to, uh, to access through here, 
but also the ability to uh, put it into kind of a GIS feature class. We can see the polygon of that work site uh, uh, that came in from the one call center. So it's very easy for us to see which utilities are going to be part of that locate that we get to, uh, to mark up. All right. So with that, um, with each of these that are assigned, whether that's pre-assigned based on geography, uh, or if you wanted to dispatch and reassign things based on, um, you know, someone sick for the day, you can easily use Omni to do those types of processes. So here, you know, looking at these eight assigned work orders, um, I can go in and actually say, okay, well, you know what, this one and this one, I'm actually going to uh, assign those to not only Steve and Kevin, but Jamie is also available. Uh, I know Steve's kind of uh, off and on today. So I can update that assignment, save that. Now that will update those two selected work orders. Yes, please. And now that will go to Jamie's iPad as well. Uh, so very straightforward and uh, you know, easy to go ahead and reassign as needed. Yeah, and Kevin, that's what I was mentioning. You know, there are definitely scenarios with those emergency ones where you already have people in the field, right? They're already nearby. So that ability to sort of reassign in real time and have it show up on their iPad is fantastic. Yeah, I agree. All right. So, yeah, so speaking of, let's go ahead and jump into our field devices here. Let me uh, go ahead and uh, connect to my iPads. Give me one moment here. So Kevin, off the top of your head, does iPad have a uh, fax capabilities for anybody? <laughs> you, to do that? you know what's funny? I actually have a uh, I have a scanner app that has like a fax built into it on this iPad. So <laughs> I'm I will definitely be able to forward any faxes as needed. So great. Glad to hear it. Uh, let me uh, go ahead and show full screen here. background. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm showing you guys kind of the, uh, uh, the the form factor for an iPad. Similarly, we can also support uh, a phone. So whether we're looking at, you know, the iPad or iPhone, uh, you have both kind of options to, uh, to view, which is really nice, right? So in some cases, I may want to have the big map of the area at all times. Otherwise, in my phone view, I can kind of jump back and forth between map or work order view or list view, uh, or jump into my uh, asset tiles as well. So it's a it's pretty nice to have that. You know, I can bring my own device. I have my phone. This is just going to be kind of easier for me to go in and just pull up my phone, take my uh, do my locate. Uh, or again, if I want to, I can go ahead and, and use a a larger device. So this works out pretty well. Um, and in this case, if I wanted to uh, look at more details here, so you know, kind of interacting with the map. Here's my uh, markup and locate area. Uh, and then I can go ahead and take action on my uh, on each of my tickets here. So here's kind of the three that I have defined. Uh, and if I'm looking, you know, specifically at Redwood Drive, um, what it does is it shows me all the ticket information that we uh, that we pulled in from the original one call locate. Uh, but I also see, okay, here's the work order that I have uh, currently assigned. Uh, and then I also see a history behind it as well. Sorry, Kevin. Can you just zoom yeah. back in on the iPad? It's just a little small for the. Uh... Oh, sure thing. Yeah, I can. Uh, you know, what I'll do is uh, let me just kind of minimize the phone here. Okay. Yeah, it's just it was just sorry. I was I was having trouble looking at you. Yeah. My eyes are old. <laughs> okay. No, it's starting to happen. All right. So so yeah. So being able to uh, you know check it out here on the uh, on the iPad device, I have any history that was done to it. So if I wanted to see, okay, so this was uh, a locate uh, on. Uh, uh, you know, back in October 22nd, I have a photo associated with it. There was, uh, you know, no marketing requested was my uh, was my positive response to that. So easily able to get in there. And then in the case of Redwood Drive here, um, so I can just pull up a, a very, uh, you know, straightforward, uh, easy to enter uh, ticket here where I can put in my response. So these are all of the uh, the positive response codes. Um, so you'd have access to all of these. Uh, easily be able to uh, select one of those items in here and just say that there was a uh, uh, locate area marked. So uh, we got that. And then, of course, any photos or other that we want to take with that. So if I'm out there and I want to use my camera, uh, I can do that. I can do the uh, uh, use my image library uh, to take a photo as well. Um, so very easy to include that. And you can have any number of photos that you attach with that. Uh, of course, any comments. So if you wanted to 
uh, use voice to text or type out anything related to the locate, you could easily do that. And then of course, our completed date. So, you know, only requiring really the response code is the number one thing for uh, for the this utility. Um, but of course, you can take this form, update it, and make it a little bit more specific to uh, to your workflows as well. So, and then once I go into that, now it gives me that option to say, okay, well, the work order's closed. If you want to be able to, uh, you know, add any sort of time, material, and equipment, you know, if I spend an hour out there or whatever, we can easily do that. So that's, uh, you know, able for us to track. Same with any materials that we use, you know, markup paint, flags, other, uh, and then of course equipment, any vehicles or other that we wanted to keep track as well. So from kind of start to finish, not only can you mark out the tickets, uh, but you can also enter in any sort of work order, time, materials, uh, and other details. Uh, these are optional components as well, which is nice. So if you're just out there doing, you know, straight ticket management, no need to fill out any time, materials, equipment, that can be you know, turned off, so you can just focus on just those key data entry points. All right, so I'm going to save that, and then here we can see that no active work orders, that is done. Uh, we got our empty inbox, uh, and then I can jump to our history and see now all three entries, including the one we just did, which is great. So, um, and then based on that, you know, being able to, again, just, you know, looking at the phone view, same type of thing. So, you know, if I'm going to my history here, looking at that form, so here's all of that, you know, kind of that same form factor. Um, just uh, what's nice is we don't like shrink the map and the panel and everything into just the phone view. It just uses kind of the, the maximum real estate uh, based on that, which makes it really nice. All right. Um, so one, one other thing related to, uh, to positive response um, that we're seeing a lot of these days is um, utilities, especially cities that have multiple member codes. Um, so for example, a, a city would have like a, a water, uh, you know, set of infrastructure. They have sewer lines. There may be electrical. There may be gas lines, um, that they would be under their purview. So within Cedru and the way we've handled the dig ticket integration is if you were to get just like a single email for the whole city, you can still respond to all four utilities, uh, which is really nice. So that adds some, some nice flexibility to the ability to uh, not necessarily have to have, you know, four different emails. There may be additional costs associated with uh, getting additional emails. So, you know, Cedar has a, a great way to streamline that, save uh, the utility some money on additional kind of, you know, notification emails, as well as being able to, uh, to respond to all uh, proper utilities within that city or organization. So if you if you have more than one utility uh, for your city, this is a, a huge uh, benefit for you guys. Yeah, and Kevin, that works in conjunction, right, with the assignments too, right? It can be yeah. uh, parsed out by the type. Absolutely, yep. That's great. All right. Um, so kind of last but not least related to um, all of the, the work that's being done. So just wanting to kind of show another example here of, uh, you know, some additional uh, work orders and um, uh, tickets being generated. Um, and then also just, you know, keeping track of the work that's being completed and uh, trending on that. So if I look at, and here's 185 big tickets uh, that were done over uh, this period of time, I think it was... Uh, a uh, monthly, yeah, basically from 1020 to uh, 1117. So kind of the last 30 days or so um, and being able to see that performance. Uh, and then of course, having a, a nice view into additional dates. We have this stock market style view of, okay, well, what's our monthly, what's our quarterly performance? Uh, how have we been doing over the last six months? So, and then you can also see, you know, kind of tabulating of like 747 done over the last six months. So that's about a 31% improvement from the six months prior. Um, and we are seeing some, some pretty significant um, uh, improvements in efficiency, being able to manage these tickets more effectively. They're spending less time uh, you know, going through and dealing with and, and administering the workflow um, and more time just taking care of the locates and getting on to the next thing. So. All right. So that is relatively kind of the uh, the, the demo 
for 811. Um, you can see it's it's relatively straightforward, right? We, we didn't want to have uh, too many things for a user to have to figure out with this. Um, you know, it's built right into Omni. You can, you know, set up your dashboard and set up your views specific to tickets that you want to keep track of. And then, of course, on your Field Force app, whether you're using it on a phone, uh, iPad, Windows tablet, uh, you have full access to those tickets, full access to your GIS map, and then being able to instantaneously respond, uh, positive response directly from the field. So, um, yeah, with that, we can kind of jump to the next slide. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate that. Stop sharing here. Should be sharing. Great. Can you see my PowerPoint again? Yes, sir. All right. So, guys, we just wanted to do a quick summary of sort of the, the pain points that we covered in the beginning um, and sort of what Kevin was just showing from Setter's 811 Solutions perspective of how those are solved. Um, we are going to, this is sort of the last slide before we go into the poll results. So, I just uh, prompt you guys again, to, if you wouldn't mind, to try and answer those questions while we kind of talk this through a little bit, and then we're going to hop into taking a look at those results and uh, answering any questions you guys may have. So go ahead. Yeah, great. So, you know, as we, as we talk about, you know, the, the first kind of challenges, right? So like when I'm seeing tickets outside of my jurisdiction and I'm spending time trying to figure out whether this is actually in my service area or not, obviously that map driven ticket management that we saw within the Setter platform, really helps us out with that. We can immediately say all clear or, you know, out of my service area um, without needing to spend any additional time. Um, and then regarding that other issue with like the volume of tickets potentially being overwhelming, those auto assignments are, are pretty crucial for that. And again, that can be auto assigned to even if you have, you know, one or two locators, all of the tickets can go directly to them or if you have it based on geography, if you have a larger service area that you're managing and you have you know, a handful of locators supporting that, um, you can easily have that auto assign, which is really nice. In addition to that, since we can auto assign to locators based on geography, if something is outside of that geography, that will also show up as basically like an unassigned or um, out of bounds ticket that you can easily go through and see those directly in Omni um, and just, you know, completely ignore those or, or respond accordingly. Um, but it's nice that, uh, you know, the, the geography allows us to do those things. Um, and then, of course, the, the locate deadline. So when we have the metrics, the map, the KPIs, and uh, our different reports that are able to say, okay, these are our three emergency tickets. These are the two unassigned emergency tickets. Uh, and then even taking it a step further where it's like overdue uh, tickets, all of that can be part of your Omni uh, view and, and those reports can easily be set up. Uh, and then of course the, the paperwork lost or you know, trying to uh, uh, you know, make sense of, of the work that's been done because we're directly integrated into the one call center, uh, the moment they hit save from their device, that's now going back to the 811 center uh, so you're good to go there, and that work order gets marked as completed. Um, and then, of course, the access to GIS. So we do have a map-centric ticket management system, full GIS access, as, as you guys saw, uh, for both Omni and Field Force, um, including pictures was a challenge. But now that we have these devices, whether it's my phone in my hand or an iPad or a tablet, uh, I can easily use that device camera to capture those photos. Uh, and lastly, the, the response requirements, especially with, you know, kind of current pressure to get that done for uh, SoCal utilities, um, making sure that that positive response functionality is built right in uh, and then also kind of, you know, inclusive of multiple kind of responses depending on what your uh, utility is responsible for. Awesome. Thank you for that great summary, Kevin. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Guys, we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to stop the polling now at this point, and uh, we'll have a chance to uh, display that on screen here in one second. So I'm going to go ahead and share the results. And again, this should be popping up another window for you to follow along. Um, please let me know if for some reason you can't see that, but really just going to take a look at these items and, and you know, we'll talk about them a little bit. And uh, perhaps you guys could provide some, some color commentary if needed. Um, but then we'll go ahead and address questions. So with the first one, um, you know, how do you guys currently handle 811 tickets? 
Looks like the majority or half of the group uh, responded that they're using an 811 ticket management solution. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. Um, and then the others are a little bit spread out over um, paper, electronic emails, and um, sorry, paper and electronic work orders, and then using the emails coming out of the one call center. So very interesting. Um, all right, so what issues has your utility experienced with 811 in your locate work? Uh, pretty well uh, spread across here. It looks like, yeah, number, the volume, Kevin, we, we have been hearing that quite a bit. That's definitely one. Um, and then, yeah, the tickets that you have to respond to, because they're outside of your jurisdiction, but you're not positive, you have to go out there. That's definitely a big pain. Um, and then pictures. All right, I like it. Um, all right, and then the last one, um, just sort of uh, in terms of uh, requirements, it looks like, uh, oh, geez, um, two thirds of you guys have some sort of positive response requirement either today or coming in the near future. So that's a pretty good, uh, good portion. Yeah. Kevin, any thoughts on the, on the poll results? No, it's, uh, I, I'm not surprised. Um, you know, the, uh, it, it's looking like, you know, the, I guess one thing that is a little bit, um, interesting is like the tickets outside your jurisdiction, you know, that's, that's a good percentage of folks that, that are having that problem. Um, you know, so, you know, and that's, that's one of the kind of big quick wins, um, that, uh, that Cedru 811 will, will handle for you right away. Um, and then just, I mean, all these things, it's, it's just nice to see. You know the, the light at the end of the tunnel a little bit with uh, with each of these challenges and how easily you know Cedaru can can handle those and, and manage those. Um, so yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, Kevin, another cool thing that I don't we didn't really mention today because it but it is pertinent with the deadlines upcoming is that you know eight one one is is one of the applications that we can really implement very quickly. We actually uh, just had some some feedback from a client about that, and, you know, so that's one of the nice things, right? It's a very simple application to set up with some really nice workflows and uh, a quick win, as I would, I would say. Yeah, and it's one of the few that is very standardized. So like, you know, we have a, you know, a, a form that, that meets, you know, a large percentage of users needs, that's ready to go. We have kind of templates in place. Um, and then, you know, our ability to connect with those 811 systems, you know, out of the box. Um, we have seen implementations of, uh, you know, basically from start to finish in about two weeks. Um, so that's pretty exciting, you know, being able to, you know, to work with the utility. Um, we got a good relationship with the folks at the, uh, the various one call centers. Um, so yeah, so it's a, it's a very smooth, easy transition uh, to get into this platform and start saving time and money right away. I will say that our services uh, manager would probably prefer that we mention that that was a bit of an outlier, but yes, uh, very quick, Kevin. Thank you for that. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing the results at this point, and we do have a couple of questions in the Q&A, so I wanna address those. So Kevin, there's a question about looking up completed tickets from weeks, months, or even years ago. Yep, yeah, so, and that's something that we did end up showing in our trend view there. So we went through and we showed the uh, closed work orders. We looked at kind of the six months, the three months, the one month time frame. So those are you know very easily accessible. Um, and then within all those reports, um, you're able to export those out to uh, to Excel, so you can have your own reporting um, you know as required. Um, so yeah, and and within the Cedru platform, uh, we can store those tickets really as long as you need them. Um, so, you know, if there's a, uh, you know, kind of a three-year requirement of, of storing those records, um, you know, et cetera, we'll, we'll have that for you. Um, so, you know, our ability to kind of archive and, and store all of those historic records, you know, makes it nice. Wonderful. And then the last question is a little bit about um, sort of geographic footprint and uh, you know, jurisdictions. And I thought maybe you could just talk a little bit about that. Um, yeah. So what's, what was the specific question about the jurisdiction? Really just kind of asking like what states are we covering and that sort of oh. thing. I think, you know, at least from my understanding, there's a lot of regional ones, right, that, yeah. that cover large swaths that we're already integrated with. Yeah, so, um, you know, California, Colorado, uh, Louisiana, Missouri, um, we have, uh, uh, there's a number of within um, the, uh, the, the Louisiana platform. Um, and Missouri, that, that actually included uh, like Texas and Illinois, and there's about a dozen or so states that that, that 
um, yeah. with that processing included. We have uh, uh, New England, so you know Massachusetts, New England area, um, Connecticut, um, and uh, in Michigan as well. So those are all kind of the um, you know the, the ones that we support today. Um, if it's if it's a new integration. Um, you know, all the one call centers are very easy to work with. So, you know, we found that, you know, creating a new integration is, is uh, super straightforward. So. That's great. Yeah. I, I know that last one with Louisiana opened up, I think it was like 19 states or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. There's a lot of the, uh, a lot of the South. I think um, one of our, one of our employees is in Tennessee and she said that her, her utility used to use uh, the same one as Louisiana. So. Mm. Awesome. Okay, that was all the questions we had today. Um, so let's just uh, just do a quick wrap up here. Guys, we really hope you uh, enjoyed the session today and got a chance to take a look at Sedru's 811 solution. Um, as usual, if you're interested in what we're up to, what we're doing these days, uh, social media is a great way to follow us. Um, all of this webinar, as well as all our other webinars, are all on our YouTube channel. Um, we record these, make them available for people to uh, access and share with others. So if someone from your utility was unable to attend today, please feel free to send them a link. And uh, we hope to see you guys back here next time on the next uh, version of Saturday Live. All right. Thank you for your help today. Yeah. Thanks, Dylan. Appreciate it, man. Have a good day, everyone. You too, guys. Take care. Mm -hmm.